Hi. Uh, welcome to the introduction to Designate talk. Uh, we are just going to today go over what Designate is, how you can use it, and how it works. So, uh, my name is Graham Hayes. I'm the Designate PTL. Uh, Tim Simmons is a member of Designate Core, and Eric Larson is one of the other developers on Designate. So, we're going to go over a quick overview of what it is, how you can use the API and Python bindings and other libraries to interact with it, how we work with DNS servers, and then how you can integrate it with other OpenStack components. So, Designate is a simple, to use, easy to use REST API that can interact with multiple different DNS servers behind the scenes. It allows you to choose whatever DNS server you want to use and present, present a consistent API to your end users. So we have a small amount of, a, a small number of services that we use to make all this work. We have an API service, which is just a very basic service that takes your input, validates that it's semantically correct, and makes sure that you're authenticated, you're an actual user, and passes it to our central process. This is where all the business logic happens. So this is the service where we write everything to the database. We make sure that you're, you have the correct permissions to do everything. <coughs> and it's where we, dis we dispatch the rest of the tasks to the system. Central it then interacts with our pool monitor service, which loads up pluggable backends. So you can decide which DNS server you're using. And this is where they plug into the system. The backends then are responsible for creating and, and deleting zones on the servers. And then Pool Manager will then use a service called MiniDNS, which is a very lightweight Python service that talks the DNS protocol to push out uh, the DNS information for the zone to the, customer, to, to the servers that your customers will use using the DNS protocol just with a simple zone transfer. We then have Nova and Neutron can also interact directly with our API, or you can listen to events off of the notification queue to perform actions within Designate to create and delete uh, uh, records. So Designate is there because it's a, it's a very important part of how the internet works. Without DNS, it's kind of difficult to get to services. Not most people can't remember IP addresses for v4, and nobody can remember IPv6 addresses. It's a lot easier than in, traditionally in enterprises or most places to get a DNS record created you have to create a ticket, or you have to go to a self-service tool that may or may not give you permission, or you have to edit files on a, on, a, on a DNS server manually. It's all very complex, and it means that it, it, there's a bottleneck of the people who are allowed to actually create the DNS records. With Designate, you can push that responsibility out to the users, so they're entirely self-service, which means that it, it re reduces load on your IT teams and gives users the power to do what they want. So that's how we, an overview of how we work. Eric is going to go through the best way to work with us. Right. So uh, in order to use Designate, you actually want to make requests to it. So there's three ways you can actually talk to Designate. There's a REST API. Uh, so there's free standard HTTP REST uh, conversation you can have with, with Designate. There's a command line client, and there's also Python bindings. So we're going to go through each one and uh, give you guys a quick overview of how that works. So starting off, we have a REST API. There is a version one, but it is deprecated. So don't use it. Don't look at it. Don't try it. It's not worth your time. Uh, there is a v2 API, and that's stable. And this is the one uh, you should be focusing on using. This is one the uh, command line client uses. This is what the Python bindings can use. This is uh, the latest and greatest. There's also an admin API, and that's for doing administrator tax tasks. So uh, prime example is you can do things like assign quotas to a tenant to say, oh, you can only have x many zones, for example. So here's a quick example. This is a, this is a post request, an HTTP request, to create a new zone. So this is creating the um, zone, example.domain.org. Uh, it sends an email. So we go and we make that request to, um, you can see the version 2 API. Uh, and so it's just simple JSON. Uh, real, 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 uh, should be pretty familiar to you guys if you guys are using anything in OpenStack. So, and this is a response, a little bit, a little bit small to read. Hopefully, you guys can read it okay. But uh, one thing I want to point out is you see near the bottom, you see status pending. And so that's because uh, the API is asynchronous. So what you would do is you would make your post request. You'd get this response back. You can see in the links, there's a self. 
and that provides you a URL that you can then pull, and you can pay attention to that status value to see when that domain was created. And one thing to note, too, is that uh, when you do get a status uh, eventually of active, it actually should be able to be resolved on the DNS infrastructure. We should, you should be able to do a dig and get a resolve back. So here's another example. So we're going to go and we're going to create a, an actual record. And uh, just uh, if anybody can see an error with this, the problem with this request, go ahead and shout it out. 1,000, that's right. So we're trying to do an IP address of 1,000.0.0.1. Uh, and that's obviously not a, a, a correct IP address. So um, we'll see what the response looks like. So here, we get, a, we get an error. We actually get a 400, a bad request. And you can see that we try to make an effort to give you a message to say, hey, 1,000.0.0.1 is not a valid IP4 address. So um, where possible, we really do try and give you guys good error messages so you can act accordingly and fix, fix things when they're broken. So next up, uh, we have a command line client. So this integrates with the OpenStack command line client. Uh, so basically, this uh, fake shell here I'm showing you, you see we, have, we install the Python designate client package. Uh, and then when you install the Python OpenStack client package, that installs the plugin that will allow you to, to talk to designate. So for example, you would, you would log in and have your credentials with, a, uh, with the OpenStack client. That would go and authenticate with Keystone. Your service catalog would have the endpoint, and you'd be able to use that then to do things like the next thing, where you see OpenStack zone create. And there you can go and create a new zone. Uh, or for example, OpenStack record create. So there we, we're creating a, a, new, uh, a new A record. Um, so you, there's also endpoints for things like PTR and a couple other, uh, couple other things like that. Uh, finally, there's Python binding. So this allows you to import uh, classes so you can use talk to designate within your code, within your Python code. Uh, this does use the version 2 API. And again, it's able, I'm, you can see here that we're importing a Keystone client in order to do the same sort of negotiation with Keystone for, to find in your service catalog the, the endpoint uh, to make a request. So you can see here we're going client. Um, we're instantiating a client using a session. Uh, then we're going and saying, using the client to list the zones. And you can see there I'm passing in a criterion. So that's, for example, how you could filter what sort of zones you wanted to get back and everything. So here we're filtering on the name where it's example.com. So with that said, I'm going to pass it all over to Tim. He's going to talk about how we work with DNS servers. Thanks, Eric. So uh, Grant told you what it was. Eric told you how to use it. I'm going to tell you how it works. All right. This is the, this is the meat and potatoes right here. Um, DNS servers are kind of complicated. So a lot of the DNS servers that are still in use today started to be written 80s, 90s, you know, before anybody in this room was alive. And it can, it can be a little weird. It can get a little janky, y'all. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways that people choose uh, to run it for different, you know, cloud things, small things, big things, medium things. Um, and, you know, Designate really tries to make an effort to work with all these things. So the way you do that, is three simple words. Flexible, you gotta, you gotta have a simple API that works kind of universally across all these different services. You need something scalable. Uh, DNS outages are not a good time for anybody. Everything is gone because people don't know IP addresses. And it needs to be simple because you know, DNS is one of those things that just works, right? So you gotta you know, keep, it, keep it on the DL, keep it real simple. So one of the ways that Designate does that is this mini DNS component that Graham talked about earlier. So when you're trying to work with updating a large amount of different types of DNS servers, you really want to converge on one simple protocol. And luckily, the vast majority of them implement this, this same thing. Um, it's a notify and an AXFR, which is a zone transfer. So mini DNS, which is a very small uh, DNS server that, that's kind of just based on, on those simple tasks like sending notify, answering, answering the queries for a zone transfer. Um, it's part of the designate project written in Python. And it acts as the master in a, in a sort of master-slave setup for, for DNS. Um, there's one notable exception that uh, it doesn't act as a master, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, very horizontally scalable. You, you, know, you spin up as many of these things as you want and just you know, hit them from from any angle, and it's backed by the designate database, so that's kind of the, the bottleneck on scale. Um, and this is really great, because it allows designate to be in control of the actual DNS part uh, of updating these servers, rather than trying to 
trying to abstract that in any way. You know, you're kind of going right to the meat and the bones of it. MiniDNS is really great for updating zones because they all implement that same, you know, notify and AXFR type thing. But creating and deleting zones, which, you know, you don't really do so often, you know, you're not going to create mycompany.com and then delete it and create it again. You know, nobody wants that. But that can get a little weird, you know. So some, some services are going to want you to call, um, you know, shell commands. Some want you to do database calls. Some want you to go and edit, you know, create and edit a flat file. So designates pool manager, which is responsible for orchestrating the proliferation of that DNS data across all the servers, handles the creation and the deletion. So for bind, it's going to go and call the RNDC calls that need to be called. For power DNS, it's going to go and make the necessary database inserts. Um, and that's you know that's that's it's very simple, which you'll see in the demo in a minute. Um, and pool manager also has some really nice things for keeping DNS eventually consistent. So uh, things that didn't get propagated the first time, or there was net split or anything, those will get retried until they work. Um, and then it has a mechanism for kind of going back in time a little bit and ensuring that the things that we, you know, we thought got there actually did stay there and, and are still there. Uh, there's also another component that's completely optional, and this is for people who absolutely need 100% control. So usually, designate operates on the, on the master side, and it controls that side of the equation. But if you have a weird DNS server or uh, a weird firewall or scaling situation, um, maybe your DNS server doesn't implement some feature that designate does that you like, you can deploy this agent. And it just talks the other side of DNS protocol, kind of a reflection of mini DNS. And then it, it just gives you a totally generic interface to say, OK, what do you want me to do when you have a create event, an update event, or a delete event. You know, you can, you can go through and parse out the record sets and do something weird with that, or, you know, you can, you can throw away parts of it that you don't need, or, you know, if you've got some really weird API that the DNS server that you want to use has, then, you know, as long as you can do it in Python, you can do it here. Um, and that's really nice, just for kind of, like we said, a flexibility perspective. Um, and that, that usually runs uh, on the DNS server itself, but you know, there's no reason that it, it needs to. You, you could be making um, remote calls somehow or anything like that, like say, very flexible. So we're talking about the case where mini DNS is not the master. It can actually be a slave. So there are some circumstances where people might want to um, hold, hold the DNS cards of their company close to the chest, so to speak but also have all the benefits that a big cloud's DNS services can provide. So they might keep the zone file you know, lock, under lock and key and allow mini DNS in designate to kind of take that zone via the same protocols that it would push out to its slaves and then proliferate just that copy of the zone. And that's really powerful if you, know, you, you have a, you know, a, a big customer who's, who's very cautious about security or you know, somebody who wants to have kind of a redundancy in their DNS providers um, makes it really easy because, like I say, it's, it's the standard DNS protocol for getting those zones out. So even though the demo this morning at the uh, keynote did not go as planned, I'm going to attempt one here for you. So uh, I, wrote a, I wrote the code beforehand so you don't have to suffer through that. Um, I wrote a really simple DNS server um, on, the, on the flight over, and I'm just going to implement a, a really simple driver for that. So I'm just setting up some parameters here, the host, the port of the DNS server, which is, you know, uh, 53, shouldn't be 53, 58, that's a typo. Um, and then this, this server has a REST API, which if you're watching anybody who maintains a DNS server, please give us one. I just, I just wanted to put that out there. Because um, that doesn't exist, and it really should. Uh, and so we've got the uh, we're instantiating the plugin there, the the backend plugin, and then literally right here, right here, this is it. Okay, we're going to create the zone, which is just using Python requests to to send a simple post. Um, you can see there, and then send a notify, uh, which is going to tell Mini DNS to say, hey, you know, tell that DNS server that I've got an update for it, and that it should transfer and. Um, you know, get any updates that happened, you know, since its last change. Uh, and then, you know, if we want to delete the domain, even simpler, send, send a 
HTTP delete. All right, you know, very simple. Um, so let's let's do it. Uh, <laughs> all right, here we go. So uh, I've got. Oops. This is, this is a good start, guys. So I've got designate services running here. Um, you can see. Talked about earlier, API Central, Mini DNS Pool Manager, and then I've got the uh, the client that Eric was talking about. So we'll see that. Oh no, we got no zones. So let's go ahead and create one. Uh, what should I name it? You demo. Good call. Let's let's call it greatdemo.com. And then, uh, what's your email address? No, we'll just, we'll just use mine. Uh, all right, we go. Oh no, I've done, I've done a bad thing. See, this is going great. All right, for realsies this time. So this, this kind of looks like the API slide that you saw earlier from Eric. You see a status pending. Can you actually see that? Yeah, no, that's nice and big. Um, you can see a status pending there. And I'm going to take you through here. This is the uh, logs from the pool manager service. Oh, Jesus. There we go. Um, so you can see here we were going to go and call a create domain. So it's going to call into that back end that you saw earlier to do the actual create. And then there it was sending the notify that you also saw. And then uh, after it did that, it said, OK, I've, I've done it. Now go and make sure that it actually happened. So it went and sent an SOA query to see that it has happened. Look at that. It even failed the first time, which, which happens. You know, you're pushing DNS updates a long, long ways. You know, maybe it's not going to happen the first time. It's going to take a second. And then it went and sent another one. It retried. You see, retries, and then we had success. So we ended up creating the domain successfully. Um, so, so let me just show you. Oops. It's a pretty bad DNS server, y'all. All right, so no error. We have successfully created it. Um, you know, we've got our, we've got everything that we put in there. You see my email, and it's done. Uh, and you can see now uh, that if you go and list the zones again, that it has gone active. So that should give you some confidence that it was pushed out everywhere it was supposed to be, and that it's live for resolution. Um, so you know, DNS, thank you so much. We did it. We did it live, y'all. All right, <laughs> Graham's going to talk about the future. Thanks, Tim. Uh, so where is Designate going is the next thing. We are planning what to do for the next six months, obviously, here at the moment. And what we're looking to do is integrate more and more with other OpenStack services. So tomorrow, actually, there is a talk, 9 AM, I know it's early, but there's a talk of a, uh, about the integration of Nova and Neutron and Designate and how you can auto-provision DNS records and reverse DNS records from Nova and Neutron just by providing a name to a server. Uh, <clears throat> we're also looking to do new features. People are asking for things like DNSSEC, GOIP, and we're, we're, lo we're looking at these right now. If people have preferences on what we should be doing, please tell us. We uh, value feedback, and it's very easy for engineers to see something we think is cool and sort of lose the big, big picture of what people actually need. So feedback is welcome. We're also, going to be, we're also working on, obviously, stability and making sure that everything is rock solid. Uh, we're pretty good right now, but there's always room for improvement. And we are also <coughs> looking at getting more and more DNS servers supported. So if you don't see a DNS server in the list that we support, let us know, and we can start looking at it, uh, getting that driver implemented. As Tim showed, it's pretty simple for 99.9% uh, .9 of cases. So if we can get it into, the de into Designate, we will. Uh, tomorrow as well, if this piques your interest, the three of us will be attempting 
another live demo, but it'll be on 50 people's laptops uh, at the same time. We have a workshop where we will be showing you how to install and operate Designate. So we'll give you, we have a virtual machine where you'll be able to interact with Designate directly and see the horizon panels and how you get it installed and what you need to run it. So that's tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. as well. Uh, you gotta decide between seeing the cool new integration stuff or the three of us making idiots of ourselves in front of a room of people. Um, with that, is there any questions? Uh, any questions at all? Yeah. So there's a mic up front is probably the best so everyone else can hear. Hi. Since I won't be attending tomorrow's uh, talk about integration with Neutron and Nova, yeah. because I will be attending the hands-on, uh, how does it fit with the rest of OpenStack? I mean, can, can it be deployed independently from the rest of the system and still getting events from uh, you know, a previous version of OpenStack. That's, uh, that's what I'm interested in because we have, uh, let's say that we have an older version of OpenStack deployed and we're interested in adding a stable version of Designate which wasn't in the release cycle of that version of OpenStack. Yeah, we're pretty, uh, as long as the, the Keystone is pretty much a hard dependency for general usage, um, we, as long as you can be deployed, as long as there's no conflict, if you're installing the same control plane, as long as system packages don't conflict, or if you're deploying a, a separate control plane beside it. No, no I'm talking about separate mach machines separate from machines the rest of the should be control no problem. plane. For the integration, there, there, we have a previous thing called Designate Sync, which can listen off the uh, events queue of Nova and Neutron. Uh, that should work as well with the older versions. The, the, those events haven't changed their schema really in the last so couple of cycles. Yeah. So the notifications have been quite stable from, Reasonably let's stable. say, Juno. And, uh, on yeah, I think the, I don't think they've changed massively since Juno. You know. No, yeah, the, yeah, the means we haven't. Yeah, we don't. Anything the chain, the stuff that comes through to us that we listen for haven't changed. Okay, thanks. No problem. Any other questions? Okay. <laughs> You're clapping yourself. <laughs> Gotta get it going. Got to get it going. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks, y'all.